In the semifinals, started off with a couple of quick victories over Jana Montour and Eleanor Collado, and then lost to Jasmine Ocean on the hill in a tough match. And how did she respond? 9 nothing over Liz Ford in 40 minutes, and then beat my broadcast booth partner, Jeanette Lee, 9-4. And in the quarters, Helena Tornfeld, former U.S. Open champion, 9-7 to get to the semis. Good Here at Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort in the mid-peninsula of Michigan, Mount Pleasant, Michigan to be exact, Allison Fisher at the table has just gotten on the board for the first time. Semi-final action at the WPBA Masters, the inaugural event of 2012, break in rack four. This is looking to be a short rack. She has a nice, long, straightened shot. You really have to trust yourself. Make the one ball in the corner pocket. And the cue ball would only really have to come back, let's say, a foot or so, just about where she's pointing at, to be straightened on a 2-9 combination. So right now, she's focusing on making this straightened shot. Off the nine and hangs. And guess what? Still lined up the two nine combination. <laughs> Take another look at it. Wow. That's a little bit of nerve. She had a long straight in ball. She actually overcut it a little bit. Cue ball floated to the rail. Missed it. That was very difficult, what she was trying to do. She'd have to hit it wow. so, so hard. She's hooked herself. So now she can't see the two ball at all. Now she's looking to go to the end rail, try to hit the two ball. It'd be nice if she could catch the outside of the two and let the cue ball carry him into the nine ball. Not sure that she took a look at that. She might be trying to hit the inside and let the cue ball stick there, but... Now, she's left Allison, you know, a, I would say medium shot. I wouldn't say it's the toughest shot, but I'll tell you what's nice about this is if she just makes this ball, the cue ball naturally falls on the next ball, the four ball right there. A couple of interesting choices by Kelly there. Perfect right shot. Were, but do you think those were a couple of interesting choices by Kelly? Both plays before that, giving Allison a chance, but it just seemed like the shots and not coming around and looking, checking the 2 9. Right, right. And not get it, you said, a tough shot to get back for the 2 9, just not able to pull it off and kind of hooking herself. I, I honestly believe that that was her not understanding the, the hanger, the ball effect with the full ball, what's happening with the cue ball. It would have been very, very difficult for her to actually do what she was trying to accomplish going that way. We'll see if Allison can make her pay. Has always been her great trademark. That's right. Before you make a mistake and you're just going to stay seated. This is Harry right here. She has a very thin cut on the six ball. You see where the five, the, excuse me, the seven ball is, but trying to keep the cue ball going softly enough on a very thin hit to have a shot on the seven ball is difficult. But if you hit it with speed and try to come, what, up and down table between the seven and nine, maybe hit the nine, you, you prefer to just stay away from that other rail. You know what, it was so difficult, she decided okay. to take the seven, nine combination. So no matter what, it was Harry. She had to make a decision. This really is a this bad is... one, they, they're laying you know, pretty well for it. I, I wouldn't say that it's dead straight in, but pretty close. And these kinds of shots, I just shoot the seven ball towards a perfect part of the pocket. There you she go. She does. Dead center. Let's take another look at this rack four ending shot by Allison Fisher, the seven and nine. Beautifully executed, as we've seen so often. And we are now tied at two apiece after four racks. One of these two players will move to the finals of the WPBA Masters. Kelly Fisher and Allison Fisher. Allison with the break in rack five. And a good one it was. Two balls on the break. 
A chance to play a safety. Rail first goes Allison. Cue ball drifts behind the six, forcing Kelly to come with the jump cue. Misses the one, and not only that, watch the cue ball scratches into the corner pocket. Ball in hand for Allison. And she would make Kelly pay the six, the seven, the eight, and this nine. And Allison Fisher with three racks in a row, and now a 3-2 lead. She has the break in rack six, another good one, five into the corner pocket. And this time, Allison all the way through rack six. Beautiful work with the bridge, the four six combination. Keeps the bridge, takes care of the four. The seven would go, the eight would go, and this nine, Allison Fisher up four two. Allison Fisher at the table. Four racks in a row. Kelly Fisher won the first two. Allison has the last four in a race to seven. And she will have the break in rack number seven. She has been breaking really well. First rack, she scratched, but other than that, this has been a weapon for her. One in the side. She's not getting a lot of luck after the break. Actually, the last one is the only one that she had a good shot on the one ball. But now it looks like she's going to be pushing out. She cannot see the two ball, the seven balls in the way. She's, she's going to have to decide where she wants to push her cue ball to give Kelly first look at it. Push out. All right, let's see. My problem with this push out is I think that the safety back is too easy. Kelly's never going to pass this back. That two ball is going to be end up up table somewhere around the five, and the cue ball is going to come back down table. Probably, she's got to make sure that the cue ball doesn't hit the nine ball. Oh my, she hit that a lot thinner than she meant to. Wow, take another look. Dangerously close here. Yeah, she actually meant to hit that a little fuller than she than she actually did, and she almost scratched in the hole. She wanted to bank that two ball back underneath that five ball, and here she ended up fortunate not to scratch. She, this is gonna have to be an incredible shot if she's gonna try to hit this ball thin and leave the cue ball up there. See, they're both gonna be moving so much. And obviously, Kelly will have an option of what to do. But these are all important shots for her now, Jeanette. She really has to make something happen. Right. She has to make an off-angle cut shot, which she's perfectly capable of doing. But the thing that's making her hesitate, or it would have been in the hole by now, is that side pocket. If she cuts the two ball back in the right-hand corner pocket, her cue ball wants to go straight in that side pocket. She's not sure that she can draw and avoid it, so she might have to follow into the six ball like that and she missed the ball probably thinking a lot about where the cue ball is going and not setting up her mind you know completely committed to pocketing that ball and again can't say it enough that's the the way to keep kelly out of this match is to keep her in a position where she's not able Quite to just get back in and really get back to her rhythm that's right but again allison does not have a simple shot here she can go for a solid bank or she can play safety Nice. She gave her a look at the two. She can see the two ball, but it's difficult because if she hits the ball thinly, the two ball is going to come towards this corner pocket. A little bit more, not quite. I think she sold out. Sure looks like it from that angle. She had to hit just a little bit harder would have been really nice. And you know, Jeanette, that's part of the, the, the challenge of staying seated is that when you get to the table and the speed's just a hair off, that's the difference between kind of locking Allison up and giving her a shot on the two. That's right. So the chess battle that is top-notch billiards continues. She's got a nice shot on the three ball in the side pocket. The cue ball's going to hit the end rail, come back up. Now she's looking to see, where do I want to be on this five so that I can follow on to an almost straight-in shot on the six? Ooh, really nice. 
She has just a little bit of an angle. Now she's confident enough she can punch this cue ball right between the six ball and the side pocket, hit that side rail and bounce. If not, she's going to force draw. She's going to let it come at an angle, come back up to the middle of the table and stay away from the side pocket all together. Oh. All right, so here's the option. Shoot the six ball in the corner pocket, but then you have to draw your ball away from the seven ball that you want to shoot next. Or you can cut the six, which it doesn't look like she's going to do, and have, look at where she ends up on the seven ball. And you saw that look right there. Told you a lot. It's a lot more than she wanted on this seven. She's queuing low to draw the ball. There you go. Watch out. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> that was a good shot there. Okay, so here's the decision. She's on the wrong side of the ball. So she can either punch draw and shoot the nine ball in the pocket where she's standing or she can shoot it as straight as possible and take a little bit longer shot. And it is. So it's all come down to this in rack number seven. This would be for five racks in a row for Allison if she can pull this shot off on the nine. Let us take another look. An audible gasp from the crowd. They were so sure that nine was going. And Kelly Fisher will have another chance to climb back within a rack. This is a difficult, difficult shot at this point in this match, Jeanette. I'm betting on her to make this. And right you'd be. And what life for Kelly Fisher. Instead of being down 5-2 in a race to seven, and Allison having the break, Kelly Fisher now within a rack at 3-4 and with the break. Wow.